Okay, today we're working one of our most popular OB peacocks, uh, sky blue OB. Uh, this is a fish that we set, segregated from a box of uh, nondescript OBs we got in uh, 2003 after Hurricane Claudette uh, destroyed this greenhouse and they built greenhouse two, needed to stock it, so we got some fish from Florida and I've got a couple, two to three hundred little Blue, uh, little OB peacock, screw them up, and out of uh, some of those we got blue OBs. Uh, some people call them blueberries, but this is a strain we develop. We call it blue OB. And as that, as we reproduce that strain, uh, we ended up with some sky blue. Sky blue is caused by a recessive gene uh, allele, technically, but you know, everybody says gene, uh, that call, that I call pastel. It, it uh, softens all colors and it tur turns the blue in a blue OB to this sky blue color. Let's take a look at our three breeder males. Settle down, go. See, not, and what I breed for is a nice coverage. This guy's even got a little bit of a hunt. This one has a little bit more orange in them, like so does that one. This is the best of the three males, but they're the, the best big ones we have now. And so they'll get to go again. I may end up uh, selling these two males later. I set aside some as what we call BRUs, breeders unsexed, some really nice little blue males, and next uh, cycle they will they may be ready to. Uh, to breed if they uh, develop the way that they look like they're going to develop, they'll be better than those two males with a little bit of orange. Okay, let's talk about females. Uh, males are obviously in uh, Lake Malawi cichlids. Males are very important because they mate with a lot of females. So one good male can really drive the gen genetics of the population where you want it. But you have to pay attention to females too. So I'm going to put a bunch of uh, set aside some females here. We're going to talk about these guys. We had, our, oh, by the way, we got out of our breeding colony 421 juveniles. They're a bunch of little tiny fish that were too small to net out of 300. And we'll just leave those to grow up later uh, and we'll harvest them next cycle. That's getting close. I mean, that's kind of the minimum we want out of a breeding colony. We aim for 400 to 600. Uh, our breeding colony wasn't quite up to full. Uh, we had, uh, I think, around 30 mature females and uh, probably 25 fish that I hoped were going to be females uh, when they uh, grew up. And I, so I put in there. Some of those turned out to be males that just got taken out. But looking at the breeders, breeder females, and I put up most of them. Let's see, so far I've put up 27 of the original fem breeder females and 16 new ones. And what I did was purge a bunch of fish. Take a look at this fish. That fish is going to produce very, very nice gold OB males but not uh, sky blue. So she will be removed from breeding column. This is the same one, same fish. It's just two gold. And so is that one. Nice fish, but not for this train. Unfortunately, that is the ideal female for this train. Ugly, but they produce the uh, best sky blue males. That one's not too bad at all, too true. That one's too gold. That one's okay. That one's okay. That one's okay. And that one's okay. And there's always a chance that one, that little one may turn out to be a male. But we'll see. We won't get to do any breeding if he goes, so it won't hurt anything. And if he's a female, so much better. Those are definite females. That one's a little golder than I'd like, but still. I need females. Okay, so that's six more females I'm going to add to the breeding colony. Let me write that down. 
the breeding colonies uh, up to 49 females. That's close to, uh, I like to have 50 to 60 females and three good males. Like I say, next time if uh, a couple of the younger males turn out as good as I think they will, they'll replace the two males that have a little bit too much orange and they'll sell those males. Okay, uh, so I showed you the best females, which unfortunately are ugly. Good thing about gold OBs and, and orange OB uh, strains of females are attractive. And I encourage people to have females with their male cichlids. All male cichlid tanks don't show the, the full range of behavior. Uh, most of the, you know, some, depending on how much rock work and stuff you have in the tank, some of the fly that they, they have will grow up. Their OBs are already hybrids, so you don't have to worry about selling uh, hybrids. Everybody knows OB peacocks are hybrids. Uh, and who knows, you might get some really free fish out of it. A lot of the fry will get eaten. The ones that are slow, dumb, or unlucky will, will become fish food, uh, which is beneficial to your, your fish. Okay, so I'm going to add and put these guys in their 300 gallon breeding vat. You want to walk down there with me, Susie, as I do that? She probably doesn't, but. Do I have a choice? She will. And I'll talk about the vat a little bit. Okay, I'm just filling this vat. Uh, we put these hotels, one of the pipe hotels and three of the double uh, uh, aquaculture netting hotels, just give uh, subordinate fish a place to hide, fry. Uh, this is a fry cage with a couple hotels in it. This is a fry cage that I just added Naha grass to because we have a lot of demand for it and I grow it try to grow it in these cages where it's easier to control. It tends to, because unlike hornwort, this is hornwort. Hornwort's rootless and, and floats. Nahas uh, barely roots and sinks. Uh, so by the time you see it in a vat, it's kind of overtaken the vat. So I do this to kind of control it and make it easier to harvest when I'm selling it. Uh, if you look in, there are the females. I've, some of the females I've already added. You see back over there a lot of feeder guppies. Uh, get kind of dither fish. It get, gets the, the big cichlids used to having little fish around. And so they're not as likely to eat their fry. Okay, so, and in here you don't see him, but we have a Lacostomus about this long. And his, the, his purpose is to stir up the mom uh, so it doesn't accumulate so much. Let me show you that. The bottom's covered in mulm like this, and this is absolutely loaded with beneficial bacteria, nitrifying bacteria, nitrobacterium, and, and other uh, ammonia-using bacteria. They help keep our ammonia levels zero, along with the plants. Uh, and also it has paramecium and all kinds of microorganisms that make a great first food for little fish. Uh, there are probably even scuds in here that, that manage to escape the fish. This is the hornwort, by the way. Each one of these growing kits grow, at this time near grows an inch a day. Uh, we sell this in bulk. It's surprisingly. Okay, sorry, uh, the recording abruptly stopped. Apparently, iPhones are not as hardy as humans, and it said it was too hot and it quit filming. I think the temperature was about 125 in the greenhouse, the air temperature. Surprisingly, the, the water stays in, oh, 78, 79, maybe low 80s occasionally, and that's because of evaporation. We run fans. We've got this fan turned off right now so that you can hear me, but we force air in, and then air, hot air goes out, vents at the top of the tops of the ends of the greenhouses, and we lose, each greenhouse loses about out of the 37, 38,000 gallons of water each one of them has, loses a, about uh, 1,500 to 2,000 gallons a day 
uh, from evaporation, and that helps cool it. Uh, that getting rid of the hot air. Uh, apparently, we didn't get it. <laughs> that have no hot air. By the way, wives don't uh, apparently aren't as hardy as uh, husbands, or at least this husband, uh, if he's complaining about about the heat. Uh, oops, there's a, unfortunately, our fan killed a green snake and a Texas ribbon snake. Uh, they crawled in and got their heads hit by the fan. It's the uh, fans are the, their big predators. We'll be installing the fans in the walls higher where maybe the snakes won't get to it. But we have a lot of both of those species. Anyway, good fish keeping.